Welcome back. In this episode of Oxygen Not Included, we're going to be taking a look at the electrolyzer and the efficiency when you pair it up with a gas pump with the unique twist that has happened here in the latest agricultural update. Now, if we take a look at the update notes, there's obviously quite a few of them here, but one of them is liquid slash gas pumps should now operate at 100% efficiency if possible. So that could make a big change in how much energy it takes to produce oxygen in an enclosed chamber and then pump it somewhere else. So we're gonna be taking a look at that. Now here's the other twist. Normally these gas pumps would continuously run all the time without shutting off at all. But now we have these Atmo switches right here or the atmospheric pressure switches. So you can change the amount of pressure that you want to have and then it'll flip the switch on or off if you're above or below whatever your number desired right there. So that can really change just how efficient this pump is gonna be because obviously you only want it to pump when it has enough oxygen around it to pump efficiently. So we're gonna take a look at what that number is and then kind of measure out a system somewhat like this. On a bit of a side note here, if we take a look at the farms that I did in my last video, you'll see that the predicted yield is gonna be good, good, and excellent. I mean, absolutely perfect. So this system over here is continuing to run great. If you haven't checked out that last video, that is useful if you're having problems trying to grow the correct food. There's a lot of useful information in that video. Let's get onto the gas pumps. I made a new test lab, guys. Let's load it up. So here it is. Look at how basic this is. And you'll also notice that there are absolutely no duplicates. I'm not messing around with duplicates at all. They've all been sacrificed. As you can see, colony lost up here. <laughs> they're, all, they're all dead. So morbid, right? So rather than use duplicates in my last setup here to provide all the power for all my systems, I'm going to be using natural gas. So I have a natural gas geyser over here, and it can produce up to five kilograms of natural gas in a tile and before it overpressurizes, unless you dip it in some liquid, and then it can continuously go up and up from there. Then I have a gas pump here, and that's running through a very long chamber before it gets to the natural gas generator. I'm trying to stabilize the temperature a little bit right there. That's what I'm trying to do. So the natural gas generator produces both polluted water and carbon dioxide. Again, I've used kind of the liquid trick right here to make sure that these vents don't end up becoming overpressured. And then a battery that's running just to this pump right here just to kind of hold it if this was to ever start drawing more than 800 watts. That gives me a little bit of a buffer. Obviously, if you run out of power, then you can't power up your equipment without a duplicate. All right, so let's go ahead and make a separator system for the electrolyzer without using a gas filter. Normally, we would have had to pump everything through a gas filter and then separated the two, which is no good because that uses 120 watts, makes it less efficient. So here's what I'm going to do. I have my little electrolyzer right here. I'm going to go ahead and give this plenty of space, two tiles to each side, just for the sake of it. All right, so that's one, two, three tiles above, and then one, two, three tiles below, and gas can flow all around that. So I'm gonna put my gas pump directly below it, and I'm gonna put my gas pump directly above it. Now the two switches I'm gonna use are the Atmos switch right here. I'm gonna place that in the top corners over there, so boom, right there. Sun over here just was not deciding if it wants to be bright or not. Come on. I'm looking like a ghost. Oh, there it went behind a cloud. All right, so whatever. This is going to be annoying. <laughs> you can see me, right? <laughs> Not that you really even need to look at my face. It's what I'm saying that counts, right? As long as I'm saying it correctly and not mispronunciating words. You guys give me such a hard time. Seriously, sit here for a couple hours and try to say bristle blossom and then say anything else after that. Now, if you remember back to some of my previous videos on the electrolyzer efficiency as compared to when you add it with pumps around it or it's just an open air, open air systems were very, very efficient at 0.5 watts per kilogram of oxygen. The next setups that were efficient was, you know, three electrolyzers and six pumps, two electrolyzers and four pumps. You can see that doubling the number right there and then the two pumps per the electrolyzer, mostly because when you take a look at this electrolyzer, what it is actually producing is about a thousand, or it's about, it's producing one kilogram of gas. So 888 of that is going to be oxygen, 112 of that is going to be hydrogen. If you take a look at the pumps, it takes 240 watts and it moves 500 grams a second of gas. So therefore two or twice as many pumps per electrolyzer was the right way to go. So that was the most efficient setup right there. But there were some other things going on as far as the 
the pressure and stuff like that because gas pumps were not necessarily moving the maximum amount of air or gas for each pump and had to deal with how much pressure was around it and it was kind of a weird strange setup which gave us some interesting results and these were based off of peak wattage so i'm going to apply my other sort of hydrogen bubbler setup to that so that we'll get some a little bit more accurate numbers i think i've gotten better at you know doing these experiments so we'll do the same sort of thing here but apply it to this however the only setup that i'm going to test here is going to be an electrolyzer and then two pumps directly next to it all right so the first test i want to do is go ahead and see just how much oxygen and energy it takes to run this setup right here which i kind of already have a baseline for so i want to see how much just how much power this consumes it with the idea that the liquid pump is also running so you need a liquid pump you need an electrolyzer you need two gas pumps Let's see how much of this energy it takes to run all right so it looks like i got this working i just had to expand it to two tiles here so i got hydrogen at the top here it is continuing to go up and then oxygen right down here which kind of is moving around but you can see it's a large number uh, we'll see what we get here i might just do a five day total and then average the power i think that's going to be a better way of doing this and the volume that's moving through these pipes gosh it's kind of hard to see exactly but it's it looks to be about 500 grams so these gas pumps and this electrolyzer should be pretty well paired at this point. All right, so here are the results for this one electrolyzer with two pumps right next to it running constantly. I noticed at the end of my video that I made a mathematical error by not averaging it out over several days. You know, my bad, because I kind of changed up the formula of how I was doing this. So what I got here was that it was an average of 1.41 watts Per kilogram of oxygen right there so we can see how that that functions and it was averaging 349 kilograms of oxygen a day with 43.1 kilograms of hydrogen a day so the amount of joules per oxygen is 844 averaging watts in this case right here is about 500 another thing worth noting is that it that system takes 840 watts that's its peak wattage to get everything up and running so you have to be able to supply that much current in order to get it to run but its average is a little bit lower at 492 average watts right there so when you compare the production we do see that 350 as compared to my last experiment is up from 241 so the rate at which these pumps work and the rate at which this electrolyzer works and sort of that dynamic that's next to each other has definitely improved because we're seeing an increase in the amount of production right there. I can't necessarily compare the watts to kilograms because this was more of a peak wattage. So that might be apple to oranges, but if we were to take that to be about two, maybe a little bit more, I would think that there is a bit of an efficiency increase, obviously because we're producing quite a bit more but I can't necessarily compare those two and have a, a final word right there. Down here is the theoretical maximum for the electrolyzer all by itself. Obviously this electrolyzer doesn't necessarily run completely all by itself. It does still bounce off of maximum pressure every once in a while, as I will demonstrate right here. So you can see how this is running. Every once in a while, it does bounce off of maximum pressure. And you can see the numbers drop a little bit right there. So it's not perfect, but if we were talking in a theoretical maximum, so like in a vacuum, I guess, this is what the numbers would be. So 532.8 and then 67.2 with the watts per ox kilogram of oxygen being 0.23. So that's a fair bit more efficient than running it with pumps next to it. I don't have a great way of testing that right now because I don't have any sort of... Everything is zero right here. And even when I put a duplicate in here, I don't see oxygen anywhere. So while this is all good and stuff, what I really want to see is that these pumps here separate the hydrogen from the oxygen. That's the method I want to see. So pumping it over here, you can see that there's definitely some merit to this, right? We got hydrogen at top and then oxygen that keeps moving between these two tiles back here. So it's kind of half an efficiency experiment and then kind of not. So let's go ahead and turn on this electrolyzer and just get it running. All right, so this electrolyzer very, very quickly filled this space and now is what I don't have is a very clear division between the two. So maybe this direct setup isn't necessarily how I want it to go. You remember that thing I started off with that was clearly separating the hydrogen 
from the oxygen. That's what I want to have. So let me rearrange this stuff a little bit to see if I can come up with a better setup. All right, so let me explain exactly what I'm doing over here. I got the electrolyzer that's producing both oxygen and hydrogen. However, the ratio between those two are very much in the favor of oxygen. So what I want to do is I want to pump it over here and then let it naturally separate between the two and then try to reduce the ratio in this setup right here in favor of hydrogen. So I'm pumping out a lot more oxygen. I should be constantly pumping out oxygen at a certain pressure and that should allow the hydrogen to fill up a larger volume. Once it reaches a decent volume right here, it should also eventually reach a decent pressure. And at that point, I can turn this pump on and pump pure hydrogen without getting any oxygen in there. So then I could use that to pump on over to hydrogen generator without having any sort of oxygen in there. So no need for a filter. That's what I'm trying to do. All right, so if we take a look at this space right now, this is maxed out. So we're at max gas, pre gas pressure. So the oxygen here is at two kilograms and it's pretty much two kilograms everywhere you look until you get up here where the hydrogen and oxygen are starting to mix back and forth. And as you can see up here in the place where it's pure hydrogen, you can see that it's at a lower pressure. So only 1.5 kilograms of hydrogen up here. All right, so I've set the switch down here to 1.5 kilograms and that should turn the pump on. So I should be able to start moving some of this oxygen out. That's the idea. And what we should see is that the hydrogen now starts to take up more space. All right, so it looks like the system's working out. All I'm getting down here is oxygen. There's some like mixing and then it kind of sorts, but I've seen hydrogen start to make its way up each time. I don't think I necessarily need these tiles. I think those tiles can go. I definitely want to have this tile here to kind of separate that. What I'd like to see is that, you know, this mixing element, you kind of see where it's flipping between the two areas. I want that to be right here and then have all of this up here. Be nice, calm hydrogen. Probably a really smart idea to move that pump as high up as I can. All right, so here we go. Looks like this is starting to work. So I got nothing but hydrogen up here. Every time it come, goes on over 1,200 grams, it pumps on out some a little bit of hydrogen. Most of the time though, it's just pumping out oxygen down here. So this is set to 900, and then the top switch is set to 1,200. What I wanna see is if that, that 300 difference, if that's the key there, if I can actually start to lower this. So I'll take this down to 500 and then leave this at 800 now. Hey, there we go. Now, why is that important? That's important to keep this electrolyzer running more. And that's really what you want. Obviously, if there's less pressure over here, then it's going to be under max pressure less of the time. Obviously, you want this stuff down here to run efficiently. So I don't want to be moving. I don't want this to be set to less than 500. That's probably the lowest number you'd want. So that's probably a good way to go right there. I'm gonna let this system run for a few more cycles to make sure it's running good. And then I'll go ahead and benchmark it. See what kind of results we get. All right, so I'm now 500 apart from the two switches. We'll see how that works. By the way, this system here was in, kind of in response to what Lysak was talking about as far as a, a fractioning column. So you build up a column of gas at different temperatures and depending on what temperature you want, you then pump out, you know, that sort of gas, I think is how that would work. So it says right here at different levels, there will be different temperatures and pressures. Maybe it can happen that, you know, a plant aligns in such a way that it would work. So you can kind of measure that out and then pump out accordingly. So that same sort of idea kind of spawned this one over here, which was a method to separate hydrogen and oxygen. Now, I'm not saying this is necessarily a unique idea, but hey, you know what? I could see the connection. So I figured I'd mention it right there. Putting 500 between these seems to be kind of a better, more safe number. So I like that, having this operate near 1,000 up here. And this one down here operating at 500. All right, so at cycle 38, I'm going to go ahead and start my benchmark to see what just kind of, what production rate and what efficiency rate we're kind of getting out of this system. So for that, I need to disable my pump over here. And I'm also going to need to paint in some vacuum to get rid of this stuff. 
All right, so take a look at the hydrogen separation system. What we see is that this thing has worked out quite well. We just got nothing but hydrogen up here, nothing but oxygen down here. So that's pretty awesome. Over the five cycles that I did the experiment right here, I had an average of 122.4 uh, kilograms of oxygen with 11.1 kilograms of hydrogen every day, giving us an average of watts per kilogram of oxygen of 1.33 or the amount of joules, which is 796 per kilogram of oxygen. So at 122, if I compare that to some of my previous results right here, it's not a huge amount, but it is enough for two duplicates to continuously breathe off of this output. As far as average wattage goes, it's 162. All right, so the one thing that is not accounted for here is the fact that hydrogen has its own potential energy. Using a hydrogen generator over here, you can take a stream of 100 grams a second right there of hydrogen and produce 800 watts from that unit. All right, so taking a look at these numbers right here, what we have is eight joules per gram of hydrogen. So let's see how that affects sort of the energy here if we try to reclaim some of that power. So let me go ahead and copy this down to the next spot down here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this is the amount of energy it takes to run for an entire day right there. So I've taken kilojoules right there, turned it back into joules. So what I'm going to do is isolate this real quick and then subtract out the amount of energy that we can reclaim. And we can see that the difference has now gone down a little bit. Hold up. I was watching the video and I noticed I made a mistake. I divided instead of multiplied. My bad. That made a huge difference. Huge, look at this. Watts per kilogram of oxygen is now 0.12. We're reclaiming a ton of power. Look at that. 88,960 joules is how much I'm recovering right there. So if you round that, that's 90 kilojoules in a day. And how much does it take to run the system? 97.5. However, when you map that all out, the total consumption is 8,560 joules. So the average watts, get this. 14.27. Now remember, we're saving 120 watts because we've taken that, that filter out of the equation right there. That's a huge amount of savings that just paid off because we're able to reclaim that energy. So the joules per kilogram, 69.93. What? Or 0.12 watts per kilogram of oxygen? That's pretty awesome. I can't wait to scale this thing up and make some huge production numbers. Something a little bit more than just two tubulgans. All right, so there you have it, guys. What are the takeaways today? Well, first and foremost, we can successfully separate hydrogen and oxygen using kind of a channeling system like this or a fractioning column as was recommended over there. So that actually works to, to separate the two gases. I think the other takeaway here is that we have seen some efficiency or production increase as far as these gas pumps and the electrolyzer goes. There's been some improvements as per the latest update. So that's nice to see. It's kind of hard to compare to our previous results though. The final takeaway I have is that this separation system here doesn't necessarily produce a lot of oxygen. That's really only enough for about two duplicates, which isn't a whole lot. So there's got to be some sort of new design that I could come up with here that allows me to kind of move more gas through the system while still successfully separating both hydrogen and oxygen. So if you guys got some recommendations for that, that would be absolutely awesome. You can go ahead and leave them down there in the comment section below because I think this is something that is worth revisiting. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this little episode of Oxygen Not Included. Thanks for watching, guys. If I've earned your subscription, then thank you so much for that. Thank you guys for all of your support recently. It's been absolutely awesome. The channel here just passed over 25,000 subscribers, which is a really awesome milestone, and I'm looking forward to see what the future brings. So thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day. Stay awesome. Peace. Brothgar.